introduction. Hello, listener. It's Meryl again, a.k.a. The Plantain Sipping Over. If you were reading this book, you'd probably ask, why is this in all caps? It's because I almost always write in all caps. If I'm driving down university and firing off a text, I might not use caps. But everything else is on lock. It comes from my graffiti background, growing up seeing BESTER in all caps, and the shit looks super clean and stylish, all up and down Tremont Ave in the Bronx. It was so good and so ubiquitous, I thought BESTER and its variants, BESTER TFT and BESTER OTB, were products made by a company called BESTER. That's what drew me into graffiti and made me write in a different way every time I wrote anything. There are only so many ways to do that within the rigid structure of computers. And I can And all caps is one of them. Also, if you give a shit about caps, I'm sorry, but you're a herd, my guy. Don't give me the, it hurts my eyes, shit either. Are you a fucking toddler, my guy? Sorry, with the baby eyeballs. Oh, you consider caps yelling. Oh, you're kidding, right? How boring are you, my guy? Have you ever gotten a blowjob with the lights on before? Have you ever been fingered in the elevator not knowing if someone else was going to get on and not giving a shit? Are you some kind of fucking dweeb who's never gotten your ass eaten? If you care about reading in all caps and choose to block your blessings, you are a colossal fucking nerd who follows internet etiquette. And holy shit, I can't believe that's even a fucking thing. Internet etiquette. Fucking internet etiquette. The internet is supposed to be the wild west, bruh. I know this is a book and not the internet, but fuck off. It's all the same now. It's 2020, dog. Not reading my shit because it's in all caps is like not having amazing, spontaneous sex because you're in a dressing room and Neiman's. And it's not a lab. Can I interject and thank all the herbs and dweebs who purchase and are reading or listening to this audiobook? I feel like it might not be best business practices to insult you out the gate. I would low-key like to apologize for the number you're about to do to both your brain or your eyeballs if you're reading this book. After all of Miro's capital letters, your perfect 2020 vision will probably drop to something more like, I want to say, 900 over 300. But I've survived reading and listening to Miro this long, so I fully believe you can too. If you put your mind to it. What he said is true. He's not yelling. More like speaking at full volume while you're riding in the quiet car with him. Back to me. I may have been harsh with my original assessment, but I stand by it. You knew what it was when you signed up. You know what I'm saying? I need to see actual scientific proof of you doing a number on your eyes by reading caps. I googled it and I came up empty. I'm an uptown dykeman, Bronx born and bred, married, father of four, Wild but exceptional kids. My lovely wife is Heather, whom I love because she is so full of energy, dynamic, a real leader, has excellent field vision, stands at an elegant 5'7", giving her the ability to wear heels and still be shorter than me, reads defenses and makes multiple quick decisions under pressure. If the star receiver is double covered, she can make multiple reads on the fly and has the mobility to pick up a first down and more. Just an incredible life partner. All this praise I'm heaping on my life partner extraordinaire might make you think we have a perfect marriage, but there is no such thing as a perfect marriage. Does any grown person actually believe that's a real thing? There's more on that later. Growing up, I was hanging out with my peers, but also the elder statesman of the hood from a very young age. It helps to have a goatee at 14. And in my travels, I crossed paths with Jesus in summer school. I failed gym at my alma mater, Dewey Clinton High School. Shout out to Tracy Towers. Also, please... Look at all the distinguished alumni of which I am one. I was a highly touted scumbag prospect out of high school. You know what I mean? So I was one and done in college. Then I jumped straight into the league. And by the league, I mean acquiring drugs on consignment and hoping to flip them in time to get money to go spend at Montezuma's on Kingsbridge. Anyway, I flunked gym because I wanted basketball gym and they gave me, I'm not kidding, square dancing. So instead of attending a hold down, I either crashed basketball gym or I hung out at Taser's crib and smoked weed out of a chalice weed pipe and tagged the local streets until it was time to go back to school. This resulted in a smooth F, and I was assigned to my zone school, Herbert H. Lehman High School, for the summer, where Jesus was a student. We ran in different circles. He was an upperclassman with a solid plan to go to college, and I was a sophomore, not giving any shits about school, more concerned with getting money, boosting, graffiti, getting stoned and laid, in that order, and charming girls into braiding my hair for free, or for a hit off a blunt. I had some unsavory guys around me all the time. Too many, I will punch you in the face for no reason. Or, look, I just got a gun, I'm going to come outside at 3 p.m. in July and bust a couple shots in the air kind of guys. It only took me until I was in my mid-20s to discover Twitter, write the ship, and use it to promote the writing I was doing. I DJed at Babies All Right in Williamsburg. I wrote 69. 
illustrious music reviews for Vice when it was a sustainable corporation. I was out here. I got on the front page of the New York Times Arts and Leisure section in 2013. Shout out to John Carmonica, the PMF. I was beginning under our now manager Victor's Jedi Light guidance to pick spots and get gigs in front of the camera. I also played a lot of what I call joke tennis on Twitter with Jesus, where a joke would start with one of us and then the other would build off it. Then we did a podcast, which pivoted to video, which pivoted to cable TV, which pivoted to buying a house in Bergen County that Fat Joe approves of. Thanks for the advice, Curls Mania. Since I will be exactly 36, 837 in Bronx years, when you listen to this, I feel like I've lived enough to give sound advice, as has Jesus. If the advice sucks, don't blame me. I was stoned out of my fucking mind the entire time writing this. I'm not kidding. You know how many times our editor Ben had to put ad, period, in the Google Doc? <laughs> nah, but for real, some of this is great advice, so take a handful for later like you do with the napkins at literally every restaurant. I just blew my nose on a Panda Express napkin, my guy. And yo, how do people fill an entire glove box with takeout napkins? You ever seen that shit? How are you driving around with a felony amount of Burger King napkins in your center console, bruh? Let's do better for 20 whenever the fuck this comes out. Here we go.